Yesterday, we learned that Starbucks was actually banning their employees from wearing anything in support of Black Lives Matter. And I think it was fairly obvious to everybody that that would not last long. The woke mob came for them, boycott, backlash, and now Starbucks has bent the knee. Starbucks will allow baristas to wear Black Lives Matter attire and accessories after social media backlash. The funny thing is, they're not just going to allow it. They're actually going to make the shirts themselves. There you go. Hey, that's the power of the woke outrage mob. Something that moderates and conservatives don't wield, whatever this power is. Don't ask me why. I think it has something to do with media bias. But I have a bigger question in all of this, right? As we watch Starbucks now cave and start actually, look at this. They say the company will make 250,000 250, shirts with a design that includes Black Lives Matter and No Justice, No Peace available to workers. Not only have they been forced to walk it back, but they've swung super far in the other direction. We're seeing all of these different companies now embrace this protest movement. And for the most part, look, I don't, I got no issue with the protests. I actually like the protests. I like peaceful protest, regardless of if you want to uh, oppose the lockdown, if you want to support Black Lives Matter. I do have a problem with the underlying hidden ideology of intersectionality and identitarianism. So that I think is an issue. What I think comes next is all of these companies bending over backwards to weed out these problems. But more importantly, is the fake, it's the emergence of fake problems, the accusations of racism when there really isn't any. And we're, that's what you're going to get. In the Inquisition, we are seeing now people on the left even supporting this getting banned because someone accuses them. That's when things get really creepy. But one thing I did notice when it comes to Starbucks, right? Where, where, where was Starbucks founded? Seattle. I, th- I think it was what the Pike Place Market. And they spread around. Then you have a bunch of other, these other companies, tech companies that all I- I inhabit big cities or are founded by lefty tech companies. Why is it that the big cities have all the racism? Why is it that it's the police in the big cities that are racist? Why is it that the claims of police brutality are always in a big city? And why is it that these big legacy companies are the ones being accused of racism? I think it's the left that's got a serious racism problem, but this makes sense. You know why? Think about all of these lefties who are going around saying, you know, all these people are racist. It's because they surround themselves with racists. It's really, that's the only way I can explain it. So outside of the Starbucks issue, a Starbucks issue. We have Disney saying Splash Mountain must be updated. And then we've got media. Reddit is finally facing its legacy of racism. What? How about this one? Refinery, refinery, is this even going to load? Refinery 29 is reeling from claims of racism. Refinery 29 is some like lefty feminist publication. So you mean to tell me that all of these leftist institutions were secretly racist? Apparently so. All right, then. Well, Let's get started. First, I want to talk about the boycott. Of course, there had to be some kind of campaign going after Starbucks. Coffee giant gets slammed for telling workers not to wear Black Lives Matter gear. So here's what happened. Starbucks, like many other corporate giants across the world, last week entered the Black Lives Matter conversation on social media by proclaiming its support for the movement and laying it out in a tweet. Some of the measures the coffee giant is taking to do its part. They said Black Lives Matter. We are committed to being part of change. At the same time, according to an internal memo obtained by BuzzFeed News, Starbucks prohibited its workers from wearing accessories or clothing mentioning BLM, citing its dress code policy that targets anything to do with politics or religion. Despite the backlash from employees, a spokesperson for Starbucks told BuzzFeed the rule will stay in place because it's necessary to create a safe and welcoming environment. Nevertheless, boycott Starbucks emerged as a top trending Twitter topic on Thursday. Gee, who saw that coming? And I've got all these people. Look at this. The Starbucks logo is taken from the black goddess Yamaya. Black history you didn't learn in school. I'm not entirely convinced that's real, to be honest. Uh, Mark Dice tweeted, this is glorious. Starbucks sent an internal memo banning employees from wearing any Black Lives Matter shirts or pins because it violates their policy against advocating for a political, religious or personal issue. Meanwhile, BuzzFeed reported that nearly every employee interviewed for its story pointed out that Starbucks allowed workers to wear accessories supporting marriage equality. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I talked about that the other day, but let's get to the update because that's what everyone wants to know about. What is Starbucks doing now that they have bent the knee? Well, CNBC reports Starbucks said Friday that the chain would allow workers to wear attire and accessories highlighting the Black Lives Matter movement, reversing its prior stance after social media users called for boycotts of the company. BuzzFeed first reported on Wednesday. Yeah, we know this. Now, Starbucks will be doing the same for Black Lives Matter. 
The chain will make 250,000 shirts with a design that includes Black Lives Matter and No Justice, No Peace, available to workers in its company-owned cafes in the United States and Canada. The company said that it began planning to provide shirts for employees last week. Until the shirts arrive, employees can wear pins or shirts to, to show support. In early June, a, as protesters filled the streets in, in U.S. cities and small towns to call attention to the death, death of George Floyd and others, star, uh, what do they say? Uh, Starbucks joined the flood of other corporations supporting Black Lives Matter. It pledged $1 million to organizations that promote racial equity and more inclusive and just communities. After BuzzFeed reported the chain's policy, consumers on social media began calling for boycotts of the chain. And that, that we know. I don't know if you guys have ever seen the Ben and Jerry's flavor. It's like social justice flavor or something. And I got, I got to be honest, man. I don't care if they call whatever flavor they want, whatever name they want. If they made a cookie dough thing called like, you know, social justice and feminism, and I like cookie dough, I, I absolutely enjoy myself some cookie dough ice cream. I got to be honest, though. I bought some of that social justice flavor, and it is some of the worst ice cream I've ever had because they have red pepper, red uh, cayenne, cayenne pepper brownies. Uh, look, I get it. If people like spicy chocolate, some people do. But I'll tell you what, it's a very unpleasant ice cream because you randomly get massive bursts of extreme spice. And I'm not, I'm not I, don't, I don't know what they were thinking with. Were they trying to like make a flavor that would shock you randomly with like a shocking, you know, like out of the blue, all of a sudden you're eating ice cream and then boom, you're like, oh, that's awful. Because that's what the protests do. Like you're sitting there minding your own business, drinking your coffee, and then all of a sudden a bunch of people are banging on the windows calling you a racist. I guess I don't I don't know what the point of, of putting spice in that ice cream was, but it's kind of a side issue. But here's what I don't talk about outside of this. We're seeing these institutions now bending over backwards to not just the protest to something more than this. Listen, Black Lives Matter. You look at some of the higher profile activists, and I've mentioned this before, like DeRay McKesson, who I've, uh, I, I've shouted out. He has a video going around talking about police reforms. That is a popular position. He is speaking to the hearts and the minds of the American people about issues they care about. And we all agree on, for the most part, overwhelmingly, I think it's like according to the Cato Institute, 79 percent believe we should have some kind of police reforms. I agree with it. I, I think so. I think in both directions to better protect police like uh, like body cameras can. And there's probably some other issues, but also to make sure that it, it's a combination of things. We don't want to put police in, in, in situations where they're always going to be attacked and, and, and insulted and stuff like that. And we also want to make sure that people are made safe in the event that there is some kind of bad cop. Some people are toying around with the idea of removing traffic policing from general policing duties and having a specific traffic division. And that's that's something I saw that I find kind of interesting. Some I, I, there's a bunch of tweets from high profile people saying remove traffic uh, police from trafficking altogether and enforce it in other ways. Think about this. I thought this actually might be a good idea. We don't want people driving like reckless morons. Right. But. I would, I would, I would, uh, I would argue, and I have, most people's interaction with police would be negative. Because think about it. Typically, your interaction with police is going to be you driving and getting pulled over and going, oh no, now I'm going to get a ticket. And then you just have a negative view of cops. It's like, I shouldn't have got a ticket. That's not fair. So not everybody would feel that way. But maybe we can make sure that when it comes to the actual police who are out patrolling, legitimately trying to keep us safe, that we don't conflate routine fines and, you know, the, the, the management of low tier, annoying, petty crime with the actual life saving efforts of cops who have to rush into dangerous situations facing, you know, seriously, uh, serious lethal risk. I think about firefighters, right? The reason why people like firefighters is because they show up when bad things happen and that's all they do. But if you if you made firefighters go on giving tickets, nobody would be happy to see them. And so right now, the police do a lot of things. And maybe that's maybe that's an answer to it, right? Maybe, maybe that's some legitimate reform we can have. But anyway, the point I'm trying to make is, because I want to talk about the, the racism stuff, is that there's a legitimate conversation to be had around police, uh, police brutality issues, around police reform. Most people are interested in. So when I see Black Lives Matter in that regard, I'm totally OK with it. The protesters who go out and lay down and put their hands behind their back and stuff, and they're saying like, hey, people lost their lives. I'm like, here, here. They did. They shouldn't have. George Floyd was killed. It's disgusting. 
People have brought up Tony Timpa. I think it's disgusting too. Great. Let's let's get some some press attention on it. And let's not make it a race issue. Let's make it a the the state shouldn't be allowed to kill you issue. Okay. And that there's got to be some responsibility on state actors to prevent death. Okay. That being said, there is also a more dangerous contingent to this. And it's the culture revolution people who are going well beyond the, the scope of just trying to have better cops and are enacting weird racial policies and critical race theory and identitarianism. That is getting well above and beyond just talking about police reform. Which brings me now to the fury over Splash Mountain. I don't care about Splash Mountain. I've never even been to Disney World or whatever this place is. Is that it? Here's what they say. Disney fans are hoping one of the most popular rides will get a redo. Splash Mountain, a ride inspired by the film Song of the South, is a major attraction at both Walt Disney World in Florida and Disneyland in California. Song of the South is a 1946 film considered by many to be the studio's most racist, criticized for its stereotypes of black people and its apparent nostalgic view of the antebellum self. The film is best known for the song zippa dee doo -Dah. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Several petitions have popped up recently. CNN reports calling for uh, CNN reports calling for Disney to remove all mentions of the movie from the ride. While the ride storyline is not an exact depiction of the movie, it features characters including Br'er Rabbit, Br'er Fox, and Br'er Bear. Fans have even offered a solution to retheme the ride. One fan took to Twitter to showcase his concepts for the Princess and the Frog theme. No, you know what the problem I have with this is. If you want to make an ideological change, why inject another ideological change on top of it? All you're going to do is, listen, this is the problem I have with this. I can, I can absolutely be like, here, here to these protests, man. I don't know if you guys, I don't know if you guys saw the Dave Chappelle segment he did. He ragged on uh, Candace Owens and Laura Ingram and talked about issues like Chris Dorner and stuff like that. And I, I, I hear him, man. I like Dave Chappelle. I think he's a smart dude. I don't completely agree with everything he's saying. But I'm like, I understand what he's saying specifically when he says police brutality. I'm like, I got you, brother. I'm listening. OK, let's figure out how we can solve these problems. This has nothing to do with that. And from what Dave Chappelle does, these opportunists are seeking to purge culturally relevant items and, and themes and inject their own cultural themes on top of it. Nah, I don't like that idea. OK, you got a problem with the movie? Great. We talk about the problems of the movie and we don't do it again. Going in and just changing all of these things and claiming everything is racist and must be changed is them exploiting the goodwill once again. I have brought this up time and time again, that whenever we say, you know what, you're right, these people come in to exploit our goodwill for their freaky culture revolution, far left socialist garbage. I don't think if you go to if you go to Dave Chappelle and you ask him about Breonna Taylor and you ask him about Black Lives Matter. I don't think he's going to bring up an, at any point anything having to do with socialism, the far left, Antifa, or weird culture revolution issues. That's not what he's talking about. So, you know, I'll tell you this, man. I believe there's got to be a responsibility in a lot of these Black Lives Matter activists to call this stuff out. The problem is they like it. A lot of them do. And while there are legitimate grievances brought up by, I mean, look, Black Lives Matter specifically started out of the, 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 the death of you know, unarmed or innocent black people at the hands of police or otherwise. Like, I mean, like, you know, various instances, notably Trayvon Martin. I think that's where it actually started. Now we can argue about the circumstances related to the death of a lot of people, but you know what? I'm going to walk back. I want to walk away from that. Listen, man, people shouldn't die. <laughs> like, I don't want people to die. You know, I, I, I get sad when I, you know, there was a story about the looter uh, getting shot in, uh, in, in St. Louis. And people are like, serves that looter right and all this stuff. And I'm like, yeah, I get it, man. I mourn. I regret the fact that that was the case. I'm angry with the person who tried to break in for sure. And I wish they didn't die. I wish that wasn't the case. And I always think about, are there solutions for less lethal deterrence and things like that? And sad reality is, in many circumstances, the answer is no. I, I recognize that sometimes people are going to lose their lives. I don't want it to be that way. I don't. So I'm down to, to, to listen to some conversations. And you know, what's, you know what I find unfortunate? I find, I find it unfortunate that we have to have this argument about these race, race, racial issues to actually get some change to, uh, to be made when it comes to policing. In response to what happened to George Floyd, a lot of people started sharing that video of Tony Timpa. You may have seen it. It's basically the same thing. The cops are laying on him. He says, I can't breathe. They're laughing. And then he dies. And it's horrifying. <laughs> and you know what I'm bummed about? 
I'm bummed that it, it that that was ignored because the media doesn't care about it. And only then when it's George Floyd, do we actually have a conversation about what the police are doing and when they need to be held accountable. But you know what? I'm not I'm, I'm bummed that it took that to make it happen. But I'm glad the conversation is happening. Right. I'm not going to pretend that, you know, uh, I'll put it this way. We have something I refer to as the scaling problem. And you may, be, may have heard me talk about it before. The more cops you have, the more likelihood for lethal encounters and mistakes you'll see. The police union in New York said 375 million interactions, almost all of them overwhelmingly positive. He's probably right. So we got to make sure that we are not focusing on the fact that we're scaling up and then having a lower uh, tolerance for a, a failure rate. And we have, we have to make sure that you know, we actually are seeing a, a pattern arise, something very serious and dangerous. Ultimately, though, if we can have a conversation that results in less people losing their lives, I'm down for it. And I think, you know, when I see when I see the George Floyd thing, that, that video makes me angry, man. It makes me really, really angry. And so I'm glad that these guys are being charged. I think now the danger is the zealots are taking over. They're using it for their own ideological gain. It has nothing to do with police brutality. What is what is what does Splash Mountain have to do with police brutality? What is what does Starbucks have to do with police brutality? No, I think it's all stupid. But you know what I say, man? When I see that video of George Floyd and then people come back and say, yeah, well, what about Tony Tempa? I go, you are 100 percent right. Call it all out. I get that some people feel like they're not being catered to because the narrative only sparks up when it has to do with black lives. But I'm like, hey, man, now is your chance to actually say, I agree. Here are some of the issues I'm concerned about. And I think you'll agree that any reforms might actually solve both of the problems. I don't like the idea of tribalism getting in the way of, act of actual solutions. I don't like the idea that ideologues are exploiting all of this for their weird, freaky ideological reasons. We're seeing major purges in media. Look at this. Reddit is finally facing its legacy of racism. Oh, shut up. You know what, man? As soon as this stuff went down, the freaky weirdos who happened to be socialists and communists took advantage of this. Tell me, please, what does seizing six blocks of Seattle's Capitol Hill area have anything to do with this? It doesn't. They argue, but we're getting rid of police. No, you're not. You're infighting right now, dumping soil on cardboard and getting armed leftists to guard your barricades. You've recreated everything you said you were fighting against. These people are just exploiting our goodwill like they always do. I watched that Dave Chappelle special, man. And I'm like, all right, listen, I see a lot of people disagree with Dave. I see I see a lot of people have criticisms of Dave himself. Absolutely warranted, 100%. But he's got some feelings that need to be talked about. He's seeing some problems that need to be talked about. And he actually warned of like, kind of warned of a race. War. I mean, it's really weird. But he mentioned uh, Chris Dorner and the dude and, and a couple other people. And I'm like, bro, I read what you're saying loud and clear. The violence will erupt if these things aren't taken care of. And there are racial issues surrounding it. That in and of itself, I think, warrants a conversation. But now what are we talking about? We're talking about firing editors from the New York Times. We're talking about Reddit truly being racist. We're talking about Refinery29, a feminist website, having to get rid of its high-ranking staff. No, that is culture revolution, an ideological purge that is exploiting our goodwill. When we all see that video of George Floyd, and even conservatives like Rush Limbaugh and Sean Hannity are saying, that is monstrous. These lunatics spark up and say, now's our chance Now's our chance to exploit this because no one will dare oppose us. And they fly the banner of, of the activists who are seeking justice for George Floyd to take advantage of this. It is not an opinion that is a, unique to me. It was actually a Black Lives Matter activist who put out a video complaining that when they said they wanted to deal with these issues, these lunatic lefties started taking over. And I've seen it happen before. And I've talked about how they've done this over the past decade. And they'll continue to do it. There's a group. I'm not going to name them. Project Veritas has been has been digging into them. They claim to be an Antifa group, but they're actually revolutionary communists. You can probably just look them up. Everybody, every we, we've seen these people at protests. They're creepy, weird, jackboot authoritarians, and they wear uniforms and they, they actually do marches and goose stepping. And then they exploit the angers of the people to make weird far left ideological gains. I tell you this right now, man, you can deal with police brutality in a capitalist system. I mean, I mean, to be completely honest, this country has been capitalist forever, and we've actually made tons of reforms, granted new civil rights to new groups, and expanded on everything the best of, to the best of our abilities. And it's only gotten better. 
I know this coming from my family that dealt with real civil rights issues going back to the 1960s. It was literally illegal for people of different races to cohabitate, let alone get married. So when they finally had Loving v. Virginia, all of a sudden the changes came. And this is a good thing. Through the law, through reform, through the Constitution, we made this country even better, better than it was before. Now what's happening? People who are communists, who have no idea what they're doing, are exploiting this and trying to argue that capitalism is the problem. Capitalism has nothing to do with this. Oh, they'll argue it does. Oh, well, think about how. No, no, no. Shut up. OK, the police are a state run institution funded by the, by the taxpayer. OK, if you have an argument about the cops, oh, you want to defund them. Congratulations. You know what arises after that? Private police. If that's the argument, so be it. But you can't have these same ideas going that it's a problem of capitalism and an American empire and imperialism. These have nothing to do with it. I'm sorry, man. I see when when DeRay McKesson comes out and says police reforms that make sense, no chokeholds, things like that. I'm like, I hear you. All right. And then you get these ideologues that come out and attack him for it. And worse still, they use the I cannot stand this stuff, man. When 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 you see people like DeRay come out and say like no chokeholds, they then use that as a front to argue why they're weird, far left, you know, uh, equality of outcome, socialist type nonsense is warranted. They say, all we're asking for is that cops don't strangle us. And you're like, I agree with that. What I don't agree with is you then going to every company and shaking them down and demanding they make all these ridiculous cultural changes and ban movies and ban playing cards. That's what's happening. So listen, the, the, over, the big problem we have in the end, you give them an inch, they take 50 miles. Let's wrap this back up with Starbucks. Starbucks made the mistake of defying the mob. But you know what? I guess, you know, they tried. They tried. And now instead of just putting out their little message saying, we support you, they're, they're now having to print a bunch of T-shirts. And now they're going to actually give, you know what, man? It's, it's, it's the exploitation of goodwill. That's what I can't stand. I absolutely can't stand it. If someone comes to me and says agents of the state are oppressing them, I'm going to be like, let's talk about it. I'm not I don't like that. You know what I mean? And what I said when the George Floyd thing initially happened was I understand the race stuff completely. There are a lot of people who bring up, you know, other people like like Tony Timpa, for instance. All we got to say, we can bring everyone together. We can make this change. If we say it's a violation of the Fifth Amendment, first and foremost, the violation of due process rights, the government, state actors ending someone's life before they were presumed guilty of anything, and the cops shouldn't have the right to do this. And we're not talking about a life or death, life or death situation. We're talking about callous, callousness and reckless disregard. If after that, you want to have a conversation about race relations and stuff, totally down, totally down. But I think we have to figure out what our lowest common denominator is that brings us together. And it's the fact that we, as American citizens, have constitutional rights that must be guaranteed. And all of these circumstances, regardless of race, violate the fifth, probably the fourth, first, second amendment in a lot of these instances. I mean, take a look at stop and frisk. That's a violation of the second amendment if you're a second amendment absolutist, for sure. So I do think we have a lot of overlap where we can come together and agree on a lot of things. What I don't like is that ideological zealots are using this for their advantage to, uh, to push forward weird socialistic endeavors. I don't know, man. It's the best I can do, right? Stick around. Next segment's coming up at timcast.net at 4 p.m. It's a different channel, and I'll see you all then.